morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 267 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on 367. That's what I said. I thought you said two, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I said three. On the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Wednesday, April 24th, 2024, and it is a gray day here at the Ottawa Beaver Lodge. Uh, really gray, actually. It's almost ominously gray. Uh, I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. And uh, I'm just going to move this because my logo is right on my head. There, there we go. go a little side there uh, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors the pepper master the miss Fee mysteries from corvid moon from corvid moon publishing and canadian tarot.com we have a little nibble for you sorry for the late start of course uh, ottawa beaver lodge uh, i decided not to try the laptop today given that it fails it fails spectacularly pretty much every time and just go directly through the cell phone um so uh, uh Sound is better. The image is better. It seems to be working better. The connection seems to be better. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a little slower or maybe more difficult to, to show clips and um, images today because I would have to literally pick up the phone to do it and <laughs> watch you look at the ceiling as I turn it up. Uh, but we will uh, do the best that we can to get a good show for you. But before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing today, sir? Uh, you know, ordinarily I'd say not too bad. Uh, and, and today, I mean, it started off, uh, woke up to a, an 80 pound love hound licking my face, which is mm. an unpleasant way to wake up as much as I love her. I don't like it when she licks my face. Come on, she <laughs> licks your butthole. I don't want it on my face. And anyway, dogs, you know, uh, so got dressed, took her out and did not bother to look out the window or check the forecast. Now I dressed warmly, but I didn't realize it was pouring rain mm. and I got soaked. But of course, you know, my Dogo Argentino, a dog that's supposed to love the hot weather and hate the cold, wet, rainy weather. No, no. There's only one other dog out around at the moment. It was a big Newfoundlander because that's their thing, right? No, she doesn't want to come in. I'm like, it's pouring rain and cold. I'm freezing. You, you've got just thin fur on. How, no, she's looking for squirrels, looking for bunnies, just wanting to play with other dogs, but there's no other dogs. <laughs> I don't oh. understand her. I don't <laughs> understand her. I love her. I don't understand her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dogs. What can you do? <laughs> I, 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 All you're supposed to do is love them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's don't understand them. Just love him. No. No. <laughs> no. Just love him. Don't try and understand him. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, we have a bit of a nibble for you today. Um, this uh, today, just so we mentioned, we don't forget it, um, is uh, we're, we're observing uh, for those of us, uh, our viewers who are of the Jewish faith, uh, Passover is being observed. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. 
Uh, Passover is a holiday that honors um, freedom, basically, within the community and liberation from slavery. So it's uh, one of the more important uh, observances on the, the Jewish uh, calendar, which uh, kind of makes it such that uh, protests that we're seeing going on in campuses in the United States, which are gladly or happily coming to an end because it is the end of the spring semester. Uh, but uh, they ended with uh, quite an uproar. There were uh, hundreds uh, of arrests apparently on a campus in uh, New York, and there were arrests as well at uh, Yale and at Berkeley and at University of California. And yesterday we mentioned there were encampments at University of Michigan. Uh, so a lot of that is going on. A lot of students uh, claiming that they're not feeling safe on campus. Um, as we notice, some of this is happening in Canada too. We haven't heard too much about stuff going on on campus, but uh, oh. we had a, a big pro-Palestinian rally uh, on Parliament Hill uh, over the past few days uh, that uh, unfortunately uh, had some people glorifying uh, October 7th, uh, which again is one of the types of activities uh, that certain people choose to engage in that make fellow Canadian citizens feel unsafe. We really should not be doing that. Mm. Uh, so hopefully, uh, for because it is Passover, uh, a lot of us that are letting our views be known uh, might want to pump some brakes. Hopefully that it is this type of holiday would encourage some people to pump some brakes. However, um, for those who are protesting because they legitimately care about the cause, that's one thing. For those that are there, because nowadays in 2024, where you say protest, you say people showing up to take advantage of it uh, for other reasons, usually various, uh, and usually in, for reasons that usually don't help the cause of the people that have showed up to protest legitimately. Uh, that seems to happen. Uh, you will uh, notice. Uh, for those of us who are on the left and those of us who are rainbow and have friends and allies in the community, we will notice that um, some of the people that conservative media and conservative politicians are uh, taking a, quite a delight in denouncing right now because uh, they are supporting uh, the Palestinian cause um, in the not right ways. Uh, let's talk about the ones who are not supporting in the right ways. Uh, I'm old enough, this Bieber's old enough to remember just last summer, mm -hmm. all of you were considering these very same people to be your friends and your allies when they were punching down on trans kids and pride parades. Now they're punching down, they're on, you. Punching down on Jewish people. Didn't we all say that was going to happen? Yeah, they did. But now that they're punching down on Jewish people, oh, now all of a sudden they're bad. Yeah. Now all of a sudden those students that are here, that are not Canadian citizens. Now they should be deported on site. But when they were protesting against trans kids and pride parades, that was all right. Yeah, that was fine. Right? As long as they hate the same people we hate, they're okay. Yeah. 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 That's what it boils down to. That's that's their that's their modicum uh, of that's their mo. Sorry, is yeah. what I was looking for. Their mo. We're, we're, we're not being dicks here. We're just saying that we can't help but have noticed. Yeah. All right. Um, so for that faction, the people that are there because they care more about being right or they care about being pure, mm. care about being doing right by fellow citizens, uh, for those that are there to cause trouble, for those that are for any other reason other than actually legitimately being there because they care about the issue legitimately and are protesting legally in legal manners because they're not engaging in hate speech and whatnot because you always have to separate both groups oh yes well that do protest causes that we may or may not agree with but do so legitimately the other day i just saw on the web for example groups of people that supported vaping mm -hmm. to Find our petition because they want to attack vaping and they've got some people rolling their eyes. Oh my God. It's like, yeah, but at least they're online working within the bounds saying, sign our petition. Mm -hmm. 
I would never sign a petition so that we can go easy on vaping. No. But at least I can respect the people that have a stake in the industry actually calling for people to sign their petition, which is entirely legal. Mm -hmm. That's how you defend a point of view that some people might not agree with. Work within the bounds. Within the system. Yeah. Not outside. So it's like, you know, I, said, we were, I was talking with people and they're rolling their eyes. Yeah, I can support that. It says, yeah, but at least. It says, yeah, you got to give them that at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, it, look. There's a, I, there's I there are ways to let your views know. Yeah. Views that people disagree with, views that may not be popular. Like that's completely allowed. And there's a way to do it that people that don't disagree with you can still respect you in their disagreement. Uh, but that's not what's happening. Right now, uh, there are people making other people feel unsafe, and that should never happen. There are people in this country holding other people in this country directly responsible for that which is going on in other places. That should not be happening, regardless of what side of this you're on. And there are people that are saying words and that are taking actions that people in other groups, people that have suffered, or groups of people who have suffered generations worth of discrimination, and intergenerational discrimination and hate and violence mm -hmm. that for some reason that seems to be a complete mystery to the people in exhibiting this behavior would make them feel a little antsy it's all just so bizarre when you get right down to it not a mystery why some people are not feeling safe right yeah. it's not a mystery so for those who are observing I'm hoping that your Passover observances uh, are peaceful uh, and that you are surrounded with love, uh, laughter, if it can be part of the party, uh, and that uh, you have uh, the opportunity to be with people that you love and uh, that you are able to observe in peace. And uh, if you happen to have people over there that you care about, uh, our hearts are with you. Uh, and we hope that this ordeal is over soon because it's uh, been over 200 days. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, Today, you will probably hear uh, lots of stories uh, of uh, the few hostages who have been released. Uh, there is one going around right now of uh, this lady who uh, says that she had been moved 13 times before being released. Uh, only 100 uh, only 40 hostages, sorry, only 105 hostages so far have been traded. Uh, there was something called the November Truce. Uh, and there was a deal being worked out for Hamas uh, to release another 40 hostages. Uh, but it seems to have, uh, Hamas seems to have rejected because uh, the Netanyahu government wasn't offering a total and complete ceasefire to go along with it. Mm. So it, it continues, sadly. Uh, along with that, for those who are observing um, news that will be hitting hard, there is news of two mass graves that have been found near hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, some bodies have been found in it with hands tied behind their back, which is typically recognized as a sign that very, 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 very terrible and very illegal thing happened. Execution. So, um, it's not an easy day. Mm -hmm. It's an easy period uh, for those of us who have friends of the Jewish faith at the moment. Uh, so a um, little extra kindness in your heart. You know, if your friends are going through things and uh, maybe would like an ear so that they can talk or a shoulder. Well, it's, 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 it's not happening here. It's not no. happening here in this country. These these crimes, these this war, this thing that's taking place, this genocide, whatever label you want to slap on it, it's not happening here. There's very little we can do to stop it. Truthfully, there's nothing we can do to stop it. All we can do is say we disagree with it. And that's it. We yeah. don't have the power to stop this. Yeah. The one yeah. country in the world that could stop it is the United States. But then they'd look like autocratic dictators if they did by walking in and just saying that's it no more they can't invade israel and tell them to stop doing that which is why they haven't yeah. israel could stop gaza could stop well gaza's not doing a damn thing that's hamas but hamas could stop israel could stop but none of them want to because you've got a few rich 
old men who want to keep this battle going. And in the process, innocents die every day. And they don't give a shit. As long as it furthers their cause and pat, pads their bank accounts, they don't give a damn. And there's not a friggin' thing we can do in this country to stop it. Yeah. Go ahead and protest all you want. It's not going to change anything. Like I said early on in this thing, the only thing that a country like Canada can do is, is try to walk the middle road in such a way that when there is something that happens, an event that happens in time, where a lot of the world pressure would come upon Israel. We're talking about applying pressure on Israel specifically uh, to be able to come in and still have their ear. Uh, that's what the United States has been doing. Um, it has been working more or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, there hasn't been a full out incursion into Rafah, which is what uh, the United States is really trying to avoid. Um, a, sort of like a ground invasion. I think that the United States has indicated they would be okay with the bombing campaign and stuff like that, but uh, an all out, uh, you know, ground force going into there. Uh, they're not all that keen uh, as well uh, with regard to responding to what's going on. Uh, the little skirmish between uh, Iran and Israel, the latest one, it seems that uh, while uh, there are still some tit for tat real retaliations, they are uh, declining in scale and in severity so it looks like maybe the united states has been able to get netanyahu's ear and bend it a little bit on certain things uh but his public position still is that uh, can't stop won't stop so um and uh hamas is the same thing it's uh, yeah we still have some of the hostages and we might be willing to release 40 of those who are remaining but we want a complete and total ceasefire before we do that and israel at least with the dynamic the way things are and the stakes the way they are now and the potential consequences being what they are now uh israel uh, the government of israel seems uh, quite content with wanting to uh, take on that cost so again until anybody's listening all we can do is basically be in their ears and saying, please don't do this. And then when they t- share with us what it is they want to do, and we see that it's terrible for us to go, ah, no, not that. <laughs> and try to convince them to take another path. Uh, mm-hmm. But we're still in the phase where nobody really is listening. Sadly. Sadly. So down we go. Down we go. The whole world. Down we go. Mm-hmm. Nobody is spared. Uh, in other news going on, um, it appears there's a little controversy with regard to the federal government's buyback program for weapons that yeah. are now banned. Uh, the federal government had planned to use the mail system to collect all the assault, assault, assault weapons style, assault style weapons it banned back in 2020 but sources say that canada post has served notice that it will not take part which is probably a good idea because that would give a whole new meaning to the word going postal uh uh-huh. perhaps right However, I mean, we have there's a history of that there is a history of that not so much again not so much in canada but no no but still <laughs> it's like i think yeah. maybe the post office was going maybe we shouldn't get involved with this because going postal is a thing and maybe we don't want to attach ourselves to th- that's my thought that's my well thought. if that's what it is that's not what canada post is saying well of course they wouldn't say that they would no. never say that no no uh canada post is saying that it's worried about the safety of the employees who would have to deal with owners who would be irate about having their property confiscated which makes it really interesting to me because unless the employee from Canada Post is going to someone's house to actually yeah. up the firearm to put it in the mail on behalf of the person, I don't see how that situation no. would ever arise. It's not like the the mailman or the mailwoman's going up to the door and said, um, your weapon, please. That's not how it works. You have to take it into the post office and hand it in. Yeah. That's the process. So that yes. is, like, I mean, I can understand the legitimate concern in that sense, but that's not how it's going to work. It's how it's going to work is you go to the post office, they give you some money, you hand over the, the firearm, bye-bye, have a nice day. Yeah. Uh, the other reason why this objection to Canada Post doesn't really make sense is because Canada Post sure has no damn problems per- shipping the weapons when they are purchased. Mm-hmm. I know, <laughs> funny, funny. Yeah, funny how that works, huh? <sighs> Just, 
So, uh, it seems to me that there's somebody at Canada Post or some certain somebodies who might be on the board who have uh, suddenly decided that on this, this issue, it is their job to supplant the will of the people mm. as so expressed it by the government in the House of Commons. So um, I have a feeling somebody might be being fired soon. Well, and, and, and what Pete's saying is similar to what they did in Australia back when they had a buyback program, except they had handed it into the local police. And we have had the program here in the city of Ottawa over the years, they called Pistols for Pixels. And back then they were giving out free digital cameras when you handed over any sort of handgun that you came across. Because there's, sometimes there's handguns that maybe your grandfather or somebody had and it was lying around the house and you knew it was there, but you didn't. They're like, just turn it in if you find it because it could, you know, and I'm like, we now, don't have a right to own weapons in this country. We don't have a right to own firearms. It's not a right in this country. It is a privilege, and it is a privilege that can be rescinded if you do not observe the rules and regulations involved with it. Because, although, if you are a farmer, it is a tool, but it is also a weapon of death. So, yeah. the rules and regulations are put in place so that people don't harm themselves, let alone others. Yes. Now, it seems that the whole reason for which, because you mentioned the police and returning them over to the police, it seems that the whole reason that the federal government had to turn to Canada Post in the first place is because the chiefs of police said that they don't want to be involved with the buyback program either. Yeah. Thank you, police officers, for working so hard to serve and protect. Thin blue line, my arse. You do realize police officers and chiefs of police and organizations of peace police, police organizations of chiefs of police that these weapons that you refuse to collect can be used against you? Yeah. In the line of duty? Y'all just lost your mind because an officer got killed in the line of duty because he got run over by a car in a parking lot. You think you might want to lose your mind because people would be using weapons against the police force and that you would want to be doing everything you can to get those off the street, but I guess not. Yeah, I don't I don't understand the I don't understand it. We have two institutions. We have our chiefs of police, we have our police forces, and we have Canada Post who do not want to help keep Canadians safe and do not want to participate in executing a law that has been passed on our time and on our dime, and in our name, to keep us safe. Maybe y'all don't really want your jobs. Well, it's all very bizarre. Seems to me. Uh, now, it, uh, the, um... Yeah, that's not the RCMP. That's like city uh, chiefs of police, not, not detachments. They could turn them into the local detachment of the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. I don't know why they're not working with the RCMP or in Ontario, the OPP at a minimum. Yeah. Now, uh, the Prime Minister is saying we are going to do everything to make sure they remain illegal and that people be fairly compensated for something they bought back when it was perfectly legal to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, gun advocacy, advocacy groups want the government to force Canada Post to do it, saying um, we don't really understand their safety issue, so we don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. But I understand their safety issue either, by the way just so you know. Uh, and it seems that, um, well, one of the reasons police uh, officers, uh, they're saying on the street, well, and anyway, I just heard a media, media interview and they're saying, well, and is that going to mean that we don't respond to that mental health call for the person in crisis in the middle of the street because police officers are now tied up going to collect guns that are no longer legal to possess? Mm. Because yeah, we live in a world where police officers actually say, you know what, there's an active crime or hostage situation or public safety situation or active situation of concern going on right here. But hey, let me go take care of this non-potentially violent thing over there while this thing that could particularly go very wrong just happens. Over. Says no policeman ever. Mm -hmm. Nurses can do triage, so can police officers, right? Gee, we have a person with mental health in distress here. Do I help the person in distress, or do I just go, you know, knock on the door and say, hey, let's go collect a gun? So, you yeah, handle no, the person in distress. Duh, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> it's like this. these 
these examples that you're giving don't make you look good. No. Literally, if it takes you more than five seconds to be able to figure out that situation, which one you handle first, you're probably underqualified to be on the force. Well, one would think. So that's a stupid statement. The Canada Post is a stupid statement. No post officers are going to houses to collect the guns. No, and every police true. officer should know in basic training that you deal with the most urgent or the biggest crisis situation first. That would, that would be sort of like equivalent of saying, well, the person that's in distress, do we not help them because I have to file my paperwork for the last thing I did? No, you take care of the emergency situation, you do your paperwork later. It was like, come on, man. So uh, also not cooperative are the three prairie provinces and the province of New Brunswick. They don't want to participate in the buyback either. So Jean-Yves Duclos, the minister responsible for Canada Post, says it will happen. It will happen in the right way. As you mentioned, we need a partnership. Not one organization can do it alone. It will be a partnership of organizations that will be able to collect and transport and destroy these firearms. All of this refusal from everybody else to do their job now creates a situation where the federal government might have to turn to private careers. And given that private careers know that nobody else wants to do it, they can name their price and they can gouge us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Canada. Mm -hmm. Thank you, police officers. Thank you, governments of Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and New Brunswick. Way to be team players. It's <sighs> exasperating. Seriously. We are literally, especially with our premiers, I mean, we're just in like spoiled brat territory. You want to do something? No. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. That's exactly what it is. It's childish behavior. And then so when the federal government says you will, then they they act like three-year-olds in the cereal aisle when they're told that we're buying Special K and not Fruit Loops today. They throw themselves on the ground and start. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have some grown-ups, please? That would be nice. It would be nice. Any adults in the room, please? Well, you know, that's God forbid they actually work with Ugh. the federal government. God. At least Wob is willing to work with, with uh, the federal government. It, he will. I mean, he, he will bring up his objections and, and he will, you know, bring up his points and say why he disagrees with certain things. But he still wants to work with the federal government because he knows it will benefit Manitobans. Right. He's not an idiot. He's not going to say no to absolutely everything the federal government wants to do in the province and for the people of the province, if it will benefit Manitobans and not detract from their quality of life or their pocketbook or wallets or bank accounts, if it will benefit the greater good, he'd be all for it. He's the yep. best premier in the country by far. And yep. he's barely even been in the job. Yep, currently is. Because he's going to be showing up to the federal government, for example, for his own provincial plan on Kevin. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. Like, this, like certain other premiers have done. And I uh, just saw on uh, the Twitter the other day, um, Madame Susan Holt, who we've interviewed twice, once in English, mm -hmm. once in English, who's the leader of opposition in uh, New Brunswick, has also uh, gone on record now officially saying that uh, if she is elected and she becomes premier of the province, she too will be coming up with her Made in New Brunswick plan to be able to get around to the backstop, which would mean we would have, let's see, if uh, Manitobas is, ex so far we have Quebec, uh, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia that have had their independent systems all along that have never had the backstop applied. Mm -hmm. uh, Manitoba, if they join in, Nova Scotia is looking at joining in, New Brunswick's looking at joining in. Uh, all of a sudden, that makes six mm -hmm. where the federal backstop is not being applied out of 13. Eventually, we will get there. Eventually, provinces will realize that there's a lot of sweet, sweet cash waiting there and that they get to direct what happens to it if they just get off their duffs. I mean, 
that all and here's the thing is like all these premiers are sitting there going like this no 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 we don't want you to give housing money directly to the municipalities because we want it to come through us no 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 we don't want you to make deals with the cities directly for that six billion dollars you have with for infrastructure if we're being unhelpful we want it to go through us uh, all that health care money we want it to go through us well why don't you want the climate change money to go through you then well i saw an individual just, uh, yesterday in British Columbia, rail on about how much he hates Trudeau and how much bullshit it is that he doesn't get a carbon tax rebate. You're in British Columbia. They have their own program. There's no rebates in BC. There are actually. BC has a rebate program. Yeah, but it's not. He's talking about the federal one. There's no federal, but you do get a rebate in BC. Like this, Quebec doesn't have a rebate for its cap and trade program. No, no but what I'm saying is he was, he was railing on about how Canadians were getting their carbon rebate refund in, yeah and deposited into their accounts just the other day and he goes where's mine i never got it you live in british columbia you don't get the federal one you idiot bc has its own program yeah yep. just, yep. just an uninformed ignorant individual trying yep. to stir up shit just because he can yep and now the big objection apparently from the conservative uh, uh, side is because the federal government would like for the banks when they deposit the money in you point. know, like when you get your CPP, it says CPP. When you get your yeah. OAS, it says OAS. Or to say Canada Carbon Rebate rather than yeah. just Government of Canada. Well, ah, all the people on the right are losing their minds because of that. I can't believe that they're going to ask the banks to do their propaganda. Yeah, like when they deposit your CPP or your OAS in and they tell you. Yeah, uh, gee, I wonder why it is that conservatives would have problems with banks being completely honest and transparent about what's going in and out of your account. Uh, yeah, that's curious, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, they just, they, they want to keep you in the dark, ill-informed and ignorant. <laughs> they also don't want you to know that the federal government is actually giving you more back than you pay into it. It's a net positive for 80% of Canadians. Yep. Those for whom it is not, it's because they're using so much carbon. <laughs> Period. Period. They've made the choice that they could take the hit. Mm-hmm. And they have chosen to do so. Yeah, and I don't know if you saw this from Linda. She just pointed this out to us, and I did see this yesterday. Trudeau said he's going to get Saskatchewan people their rebates, rebates even though the province won't participate. Yes, but we know why, right? Because he also said, yep, give it to us or not, the CRA will make sure we get it. It's got right. So we're getting it no matter what. So we could be magnanimous. We'll make sure that your citizens keep on getting the rebate as you've been calling like this, but you will be forking over the cash. And we know you will be forking over the cash because last year he started charging the carbon tax on electricity. He just didn't tell anybody he was doing that. Because he's a greasy pig. He take he took with the right hand and gave with the left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. While he was reducing those carbon fees and making you believe that you weren't paying it anymore because he made sure that you were still paying it he just hit it he's a hey. duplicitous <laughs> <laughs> that guy i tell you um other things in the news that you may have heard a little bit of trump stuff it seems that david pecker ha 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 I saw somebody make the it's comment. Off, says, you know, back. I know. I, I I heard some somebody be commenting the other day, uh, saying, you know, it's like I'm like fifty something years old and still ever, like I would have never survived as a juror on the Trump trial because anytime they said David Pecker, I would have started giggling. <laughs> Not mature, but hey, <laughs> I'm right with you, sister. By the way, <laughs> so yeah, David Pecker of the National Enquirer testified under oath that he was indeed trying to do more than just help a friend, that he was trying to help Trump politically. He said, testified that he routinely used his tabloid to suppress articles unfavorable to Trump in a scheme commonly known as catch and kill, which means catching the story by paying for it, then killing it to make sure it won't be published anywhere else and not even in your own paper. 
Uh, he confirmed the 2015 meeting in uh, Trump Tower with Trump and Michael Cohen. He confessed that he purchased one story specifically for the potential embarrassment it could cause Trump personally, as well as his campaign. His testimony is going to prove that there was indeed a conspiracy, because again, as you know, by law, conspiracy is two or more people agreeing to commit a crime for a certain purpose, and that is what had happened here. Um, now. His testimony is uh, so revelatory because, um, well, he uh, basically bargained to get immunity to keep his own ass out of jail. Uh, so, but his testimony must be true or corroborated, or else, right, uh, the threat of him, uh, well, his his immunity provision or deal would uh, go up in smoke if that was not the case. Uh, meanwhile, in the court case, uh, the prosecution wants Justice Juan Marchand to find Trump in violation of his gag order. Uh, when we talked a few days ago, there was three violations, and then a couple of days ago was seven. Now we're up to 11 uh, violations that uh, the DA claims has happened related to posts Trump made about Michael Cohen, about Stormy Daniels, who are witnesses, and posts that he made about some of the jurors. Uh, mm. The jury hates me or they're against me or all that kind of stuff. All of those are no, 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 no's. Of course, the fines are only about $1,000 each. So, I mean, that's going to be nothing to Trump. However, uh, uh, Trump's lawyers in court keep on arguing, well, Trump is just simply responding to attacks against him. Uh, the jury being seated and breathing is not an attack against him. Just... So we're clear. Uh, but an exasperated Judge Mershon has told Trump's lead counsel that as lead counsel, he's currently losing all credibility with the court. That's not usually a good sign if you're a defendant. No. So, uh, Sir Shart's a lot. You may want to pipe down. Next time you go to court, you may want to bring a little bottle of crazy glue and make sure that your butt stays stuck to that seat. It's incapable for him to shut his mouth and, and listen to orders. He is convinced he is right about absolutely everything, all the time. You are wrong because he thinks he's smarter than everybody. So no matter what anybody tells him, he won't shut up. And he is the only star in his sky. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The only one. Uh, I know... That uh, you put the title, oh no, Skippy, or something like that. Um, I'm sure he's done more stuff. I've seen a couple of pictures. I have not had time to look at video. I have not time because I've I got some photos. All I saw is, and we talked about this pre show, uh, saw a couple of photos. He looks like shit. Mm -hmm. He looks again like he, uh, like you said, French, qui a passé la nuit sur la corde à linge. He was, uh, he slept a uh, Strung from the clothesline, looks like he spent the whole, either the whole night or the whole day drinking up until the point he got there. But it seems that he was on a bit on a road trip, and then he just decided to make a stop at the Nova Scotia New Brunswick border, where there just happens to be people, even though he had his like full PR crew there filming and everything. But it was just by happenstance yeah. that he passed him there and decided to come out and talk to people and make sure he had people film it so he could put it on his social media and brag about it. And, well, uh, you it take is. What would be the response if Trudeau was taking selfies next to uh, F. Pierre flags? Because Pierre is doing exactly that here. Dude even went in to hang out with the convoy folks with a Diagolon flag on their trailer. And there's the flag. Right. And there's the F. Trudeau flags. But when uh, Michael Cooper gets caught in a shot with a Nazi, with a, a flag that has some Nazi insignia, he's like, oh, no, no, sorry, I guess some, uh, some true non person showed up with that flag and made sure they got in my frame so that I could be embarrassed. So uh, who forced you to do go there or there, PP? Who forced you to be in that shot with the fuck Trudeau flag and the Diagonal flag? Who forced you to, uh, Who forced you into that trailer so they can get that picture of you coming out of it to make you look bad? Oh, well, here's here's a 30-second video clip. How were you a victim this time, baby? Watch this. This is where I sleep. I'm getting a tan, bro. I'm getting a tan. You are getting a tan. Oh, man.
A good old fashioned Canadian tax revolt? When's the last time we had one of those? It's become old fashioned. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. When, when, when have we ever had a good old fashioned tax revolt? Do we country? have a long tradition of this in this country? I missed that in history class. I know there was like a strike in 1990, 1919 in Winnipeg, but I don't think that was a tax thing. I think that was like a wages thing. It was a, a job union busting thing. thing. Yeah. Union busting thing. Yeah. But a uh, good old fashioned tax move. Yeah. Uh, guys, listen, I do not, I know what the out external polls are saying. I am not privy to anybody's internal polling. But somebody who actually is 20 points in the lead doesn't need to do that. Nope. Doesn't need to get pictures of himself hanging around with people that most of the country disapproves of actually going into their home, making a point of taking time out of his busy day to spend time with them. And then get himself captured on video by them saying, oh, we're going to ax the tax. We're going to have a good old-fashioned tax revolt. <laughs> um, yeah, not good. Uh, the other day we mentioned uh, there, that there seemed to be some tightening, tightening in some nanos polling. Uh, Frank Graves of Ecos is also noticing that he's seen some tightening. Uh, he, his uh, latest top-line numbers... Uh, show that the gap between the conservatives and liberals has uh, is now under 10%. Not mm -hmm. much, but under 10. And I went back to look at uh, the 338.com poll aggregator, and the last time a polling company of any kind whatsoever showed a poll with the liberals within 10 of the conservatives was last January. It was Ipsos, one poll. The time before that was last September. So, um, if that is indeed a trend that's happening, um, all these things that you see online is, uh, you know, for a party that's supposed to be leading by 20, they sure aren't campaigning like they're leading by 20. Um, maybe it's because they're not. Because, yeah, when you're leading by 20, you do, it's like political strategy 101. Do not be seen anywhere with anybody that can be remotely controversial. That's when you, like, from a distance, put your hand out and tap them on the head and go, yeah, yeah, I'm still with you. But, like, from a far, 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 far distance, like you pat them in the head in Cornerbrook while you're in Tofino. <laughs> right. So, um don't know why he's doing that. Don't know why he feels the need to throw some red meat to the base, particularly there in Atlantic Canada. But uh, this is weird and inconsistent behavior with the narrative that's being pushed of him being inevitable. Because when you're inevitable, you don't need to do that. So, um, yeah, this fight may be far from over, regardless of what is being announced on TV as being top line numbers at the moment. Hey, might be just wishful thinking on my part because I really don't want to see that fucker PP win. <laughs> and I am an eternal optimist. But um, yeah, uh, I, I, I've seen campaigns where people have been, have had like 12, 15 point leads and uh, mm -hmm. they don't care like this. They don't campaign like this. They usually start oh. running a front runner safe campaign. Well, here's a minute and 13 you, seconds of insanity. Watch this. This is from last night. His, his, like, I don't, I don't know what his campaign strategy is because this is unhinged. Come here. I'll hug you because you're a bit cold. I saw you, so I told the team before, say hello. Probably negative, all you hear on the news, but 
I don't know if you could hear that or not, but I wasn't able to make any of that out now. Okay. What what he says is uh I'm gonna somebody pulled a quote. Everything he says is bullshit. Everything top to bottom. Talking about the Prime Minister. Okay. Strange campaign strategy. Just unhinged. Like it, Well, I mean, yeah, considering everything he says is bullshit. So, so yeah. once again, accuse your opponent of that which you are guilty. It's I, It's just bizarre. <sighs> well, so let's hope that these uh these types of uh, impromptu appearances keep multiplying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, because they, it's uh, going to sink them. It's going to sink them. This, I assume, some clips of this will end up, will show up in a campaign video of some kind, liberal video of some kind. Down the well, road. it's from Carol. He doesn't have parliamentary privilege here. No, he does not. He doesn't. It only applies in the House of Commons. He has no privileges here whatsoever. Oof. I don't know what's going on with my camera there. Uh, yeah, so it's, um, he's going to land himself in a lot of hot water uh, over that appearance last night. You know yeah. what? Bring it on. Bring it on. Keep doing it. Bring it on. A uh, little bit of uh, news because as yes, we know. Yes, Bio, you are correct in response to that question. He, uh, didn't those... Di di Diagonal people make jokes about raping his wife. Yes, yes. they did. And there they he did. is with them. There he is with them. There he is with them. So, I mean, um, nobody, he won't sell out. Again, a point. again, every time he holds up his wife, every mm -hmm. time he holds up his kids, I don't know about you, but if members of an organization had it was only joking, man. Mm -hmm. Joking about raping my spouse, my wife, the mother of my children. Mm -hmm. I would not be hanging out with them. Yeah. I certainly would not be going into their trailer for tea. Or a shot of rye. Yeah. Convince me that he's not a day drinker and that a lot of this isn't dry drunk rage. Change my mind. If that is the case, and he has a problem with alcohol, I hope he gets the help he deserves and needs. Me too. I, I, I genuinely do. Look, but I he should not. Be, but he shouldn't be leading a parade. No, I hate the man with the white hot intensity of a thousand suns. But if he has a problem with alcohol, I hope he gets the help he needs. If that's the case, because it seems to be. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm not. It sure seems to be. I'm not an expert, but I have lived with a lot of drug addicts and alcoholics and had them in my life in the past, many, yep. many years ago. Yep. And, and it, all the, the pat you know what I mean? The pattern's there. Yep. You see it. We see it. If you've been through it, you recognize it. So, um, but yeah, uh, Anna, uh, if you're watching, uh, girl, you might need to respect yourself because yeah. if that was my husband hanging around with people who threatened or joked about raping me and was going into their homes, uh, as soon as he got home, there would be divorce papers on the table. Mm -hmm. That's not how you stand by your man. Or in this Mr. case, correct stand by about this, right? Mr. Cal is correct about this. He already sold out his adopted father. Who else is in line? Oh, I missed out the part about selling out the adoptive father. Oh, oh, it was when he voted against uh, same-sex marriage. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Sorry. Yes. His adoptive his father, father was yes. in the House of Commons gallery. His father yes, yes. is gay. Yes, yes. Sorry. It was, yes, it's his adoptive father who's gay. Sorry. Not the biological. Yes. I temporarily forgot for a second. There. Oh, you mean Jerry Chipper, his, his biological father. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, especially when we talk about him, we absolutely have to say allegedly. Um, so, yeah. 
uh, I'm not impressed with this man, and uh, I'm sure if this angle starts going out, what was the guy doing hanging around with the people who threatened to rape, rape his wife? I'm sure that's going to do wonderful with him uh, securing the female vote, which, uh, of course, the party keeps on saying uh, that he's leading by miles with men and women. I don't think that's true that he's leading with women. No, I don't believe that for a split second. You can't pull stuff like this and still lead with women. No. 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 Come on. Sorry. No. Come on. Come on. Please. Beard, so. I mean, and this is a party that bullshits, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have time um, before he tosses Melissa Lanceman under the bus to gain a point. Oh, I'm I'm so waiting for that one. It's going to happen eventually. It's happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. He's going to have another one of those, I didn't read the t-shirt moments. Yeah. Yeah. I have Hopefully, a quick there will come you. a moment that she respects herself enough to say, hey, buddy, what you doing? Adapted. I have a quick hit for you, sir. Uh, All right. Uh, quick hit on the capital gains tax. Oh, nice. This, this is, is from the report on business yesterday in the Globe and Mail. Uh, let me just pull this over so I can read it a little bit better. Whoops. There we go. Uh, from yesterday's Globe and Mail report on business in um, page B4 in the business section, opinions and analysis. The sky won't fall from capital gains rate hike. Ottawa's update to the taxable amount will not deter people from starting companies. And this is an opinion piece written by Duncan Rowland, founder and CEO of Migrations ML, a Toronto-based capital markets startup. Interesting. I'm old enough to remember when the land transfer tax was rolled out in Toronto. Doomsayers said it would kill the housing market, but it didn't. People still uh. wanted to live in Toronto and would pay almost any price to do so. I'm just going with some highlights from the story. Anyone who tells you I would have started a company, but then the capital gains rate was increased is full of it and looking for excuses. Can you imagine the VC portfolio manager telling their investors, sure, we could have made 10 million from this investment, but by not investing, I help us avoid paying an extra $700,000 in tax. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. right? Right. I thought you would appreciate that. Oh, man. Well, here's something you might appreciate. Um, exactly. While everybody is uh, falling from the sky saying, hey, the sky is indeed falling here with capital gains, um, the government of Quebec, again, pay attention, Danielle Smith, because you keep on saying that you want to be treated like Quebec. Uh, yes. The government of Quebec has announced that it will be matching the federal policy on capital gains when yes. it comes to provincial treatment. Of capital. I did see that. I did see that. Well, that throws a wrench in a bit of a in a couple of narratives, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. if it were so terrible, why would the premier of Canada's second largest, in terms of population, province? Yeah, because ge geographically, it's the let largest. me get a slice of that. Yeah, and also geographically. But let me get a slice. Geographically, it's the largest, but but population wise, yes. it's the second. Yeah. Gee, I would like to slice of that. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. Well, you, you know how I am about the population clock, right? And how I love to monitor and watch that daily and watch the numbers just increase. We're up to 41,109,000. Woohoo! So every time I encounter somebody, everybody's leaving Canada. No, they're not. <laughs> just send them that link. Yeah. No, no, they're not. Everybody's literally... coming here. It's literally logically impossible for everybody to be leaving if the population count is still growing. By a huge margin. I thought, we'll hit 41 million by Canada Day. We're 41 million, 109,000. It's April. Yep. We're going to hit 42 million before this time next year at this rate. Probably. Oh, here comes Miss Thing. Yep. Um, how much time do we have? <laughs> Thank you for grapes. Uh, about five minutes, sir. Five All minutes. right. Um, and, and there was something I had here, and where did it go? Shit, I lost it. Oh, well. <sighs> well, let's see, look for it while I'm, while I'm doing this. Um, mother always told me to speak good of the dead. Mm -hmm. Some particular person is dead. Good. Good. 
the person that talked <laughs> seems that you've 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 met with Miss Betty Davis as well. Yes, I have. <laughs> Mother always told me to speak good of the dead. Joan Crawford is dead. Good. <laughs> so, um, Johannes Revoir is dead. Good. For those of you who that main name doesn't mean anything, he was a Catholic priest, an oblate, accused of having committed sexual assault on several Inuk children. Oh, yeah, that guy. Back in the day, yes. He died at the age of 93. Uh, forever, groups have been trying to bring him back to Canada to have him tried here, but he ran back to France that doesn't have an extradition treaty. They were felt safe. Not an Obed, president of Inuit Tapiri, Tapiri Kanatami, a man for whom I have all the time in the world, uh, says, I see this as a lasting memory that we will have about the limitations of reconciliation when it comes to the Catholic Church. Um, Belgian human rights activist Lieva Hathberger, who was working with Revoir's alleged victims and family, said, um, I thought that this death suits the Oblates and their organization very well because now they think the whole issue is buried with Revoir. There are very few criminals from the Catholic Church brought to justice. Uh, the families had hired retired Judge Andre Saint Denis to investigate the accusations made against Revoir, and his report was released last month. And it concluded that he did believe the accusations were true and that the church knew nothing about them at the time. Uh, but Possibly. they never got justice for what he did, unfortunately. Uh, but at least now they can sleep at night knowing he will not hurt another person ever again because he will soon be composed. Good. 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 Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right. Get some cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. And yes, for those who are wondering, uh, the big boss, Mr. Alistair McBear, was supervising, making sure that uh, I met my performance review. Hold on. Yeah, Bear says we did pretty good. We get to keep our jobs for another year. Yay! <laughs> because sharing is caring. Please tell your peeps and poops all about us because word of mouth is priceless. And, well, so are you. So there you go. If you'd like to not miss an episode, you don't have to, thanks to the fun, the feisty, the flashy, the fabulous, the fierce Ray Girl. If you scan that QR code, that's right below my chin right now, that will bring you to our pod page site. If you're listening, that's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And if you click subscribe there, when we have something to brush off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. And if you happen to be listening to us on uh, Google Podcasts, I believe that service is going down by the end of the month. So please do make yes. sure that you migrate to another service and uh, that you, so that you don't miss an episode whatsoever. Because we would miss you. Yes, we we really, would. yes, and if you would like to support us in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page where we have three buttons for you. Like, share, subscribe. Hey, make like Kit Cassie and lick the buttons. Lick the buttons in front of your cowboy. Just saying. <laughs> and if you'd like to support us in other ways, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head will bring you to our tip jar or as we like to call it, the emergency hydration fund here at the Beaver Lodge, where our friends, oh, je ne suis adorable, low edition, where our friends, coffee, hot chocolate, Caesar, and Guinness are waiting there for us, just waiting there for us to love them so that they can help us, you know, write, produce, market, and everything that has to do with this show that uh, you have grown to love. So if you would like to support us there, please do. If you've got a couple of loonies or toonies, uh, making some noise in your pocket there, and uh, I think uh, it could better be served by going to your favorite Grizzly and uh, Beaver duo to make sure that we keep on bringing you uh, our take on the news. We would be most grateful, and we thank you very much. And if you can't, please don't worry, because as we always say, the gift of your attention is the one that we cherish. When you share, when you retweet, when you send us stuff, that means a lot to us, and it does help us put the show together and make it better. So. Thank you for everything that you contribute because democracy is something that you do write those letters. Uh, if you are uh, not understanding what's going on with the gun buyback program and you want uh, some pressure to be put uh, on Canada post, Hey, 
write Canada Post. Yeah. They're a crown corporation. Write them. They're part of your government as well. Let them know that uh, you demand better and you want them to uh, just do your damn job. Not, not rocket surgery. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, because, uh, well, yeah. So I'm guessing from the Beaver Lodge, we're getting to the end of it. I'm your eager beaver saying it could be a tough hold out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. I'm going to be uh, broadcasting the rest of the week here from the Ottawa Beaver Lodge. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom, sir? Yeah. When, when you're trying to um, make a point about something, and we all try, don't, don't, don't pull this card from the deck because this is just absolutely redonkulous, ridiculous, and absurd. From the um, uh, Stockwell Day uh, card deck of, Ooh. I know what it's like to be discriminated against because I wore glasses. Paul Calandra with... I don't need to take lessons from the Ontario NDP on marginalized people. I'm Italian. Uh, uh, face yeah. palm. Yeah, that was like the, I think it was like the head of the soccer federation at one point. He was Italian, but redhead. Yeah. Like that. Oh, I know about this. No. 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 <laughs> no. no, no, ah, Mr. Grizzly, cue that cock. <laughs> you are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. That Lola uh, cam. <laughs> no, 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 he's such a cutie. Uh, before we go, a uh, shout out to our Canadian curlers. Uh, senior men's and senior women's team are still, I believe, undefeated at the World Championships. And I believe our seniors men have uh, already qualified for the next round at uh, the World Mixed Doubles Championships. Team Canada suffered its first loss to Sweden, but is still in the second place in its pool. Uh, so uh, go Canada, go. Go Canada, go. Uh, I'll leave you with this quick hit and then I really got to run. Yep. This is uh, Colin DeMello from Global News. The Ford government has won a privacy battle to keep the extent of its nursing, personal support worker, and physician shorted secret after Ontario's privacy watchdog ruled that revealing them could be economically damaging. Um, if they can be economically damaging, shouldn't we know about it so that we yeah. can start advocating for the fix? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't understand this decision. It's like uh, they made a decision that could be economically damaging, so you don't get the right to know about it. It seems to me that's when we should actually know about it. People are making weird decisions in our name. This is not good. No, it's not. Have a beaver. Right. Good day. I'll see you.